the metal voice once again returning guest biff byford all the way in the uk what's going on biff yeah good good to be there with you on um, zoom <laughs> <laughs> Well, January 19th, Silver Lining Music, release of Hellfire and Damnation, 24th album. Yeah. Where does the time go? It's a monster, this album as well. Yeah, I, I'm I'm loving it. Me and Alan heard it. It is, and we'll give our, our review as we go along with this. For me personally, I think it's another consistently strong Saxon album. All right, for a headline, how would you... what? How would you review this album, or how what would you state about this album in one sentence as a headline? Biff Byford says, "This album is a monster." Monster. All right. I mean, lyrically, you cover everything on this. There's, you know, Marie Antoinette, the Battle of Hastings, the uh, aliens. What what's what got you so inspired lyrically? Uh, just thinking of stories that are interesting, really, that pop into my uh, crazy head. You know, just uh, you know, just things that interest me, and obviously interest uh, millions of other people as well. So it's um, you know, history is uh, is interesting, and it's ever it's forever it's forever renewing itself, isn't it? History, Biff. What? Not only do you like history, and you're a storyteller, which I love. But yeah. you're also a conspiracy, you kind of borderline conspiracy theaters like conspiracy theories like Roswell. How much credence do you put into that? I mean, I like I like a good conspiracy theory. You know, they're, they're great, aren't they? They're great because it gets you thinking and uh, you look at all the facts and uh, you should make up your own mind, don't you? It's like the it's like the grassy knoll, you know. That's that's, that's <laughs> in, I mean, I like I'd like to think that there was something in Roswell that. You know, I'm more of a believer than a disbeliever, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not totally sold on it. You know what I mean? But um, I think they interviewed in America. They interviewed a lot of people on this, didn't they? A survey, and I think 95% of people thought there was something in Roswell. So you know, that's where the song comes from. I mean, Congress is opening, and this in the United States, they have Congress questioning, like, we want information. Do you have spaceships? Do you have aliens? So, you know, there's something in Roswell. It might be more than just Roswell. So, it could be. I mean, Roswell's ground zero, isn't it, for most uh, uh, UFO, uh, you know, people that like like to think, like to talk about it and, and sort of study it. Uh, it all sort of started in Roswell. That was the big, I think that was the first big uh, moment that people sort of heard about flying saucers and, you know, uh, trashes and aliens and, you know, there's been a, a lot since, but that's ground zero. So I think it's an interesting song, you know. D describe yeah, my Me too, me too. I love that song. Describe the musical direction on this album compared to the last. Um, well, the musical direction is we're just, we just want to write the perfect rock song. That's what, <laughs> that's yeah. our, uh, that's our goal, you know, to write the per perfect metal song and the perfect album. So that's always our goal. So we're always we're always trying to write better songs and better sounds. I think this album is probably the best sounding Saxon album ever, uh, hi-fi wise. Um, so you know, we're just um, we're getting closer to perfection every album. <laughs> so back in August, there was talk about uh, Paul Quinn participating on the album. Did that come to fruition? Sorry? Uh, back in August, uh, there was a, a mention that maybe Paul Quinn would play on this album. Was that uh, Did that come to fruition? Yeah, uh, Paul plays a couple of songs on the album, yeah. Plays solos on a few songs, yeah. So um, it just, we were making the album so fast and, uh, you know, so, so sort of, uh, you know, inspired by making the album. Uh, we did it on the road in Europe on our festival tour. And, uh, you know, Paul wasn't with us because he stopped touring. So right. it just, um, I mean, I, uh, Brian stood up in his place and, uh, you know, he supplied a couple of great riffs, actually. Um, so, yeah, we were very lucky. I even noticed, like, at the beginning of Fire and Dime Nation, it could have been a, a, a the, the intro could have actually been a, a Diamond Head song. You know, it just has that vibe. And it's it's cool that. Oh, well, yeah. Sort of... It's his riff. So, yeah. <laughs> we're good catch, dude. I mean, he wrote the guitar riff, so yeah. I don't know why yeah. he didn't use it with uh, 
with Diamond Head, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe he didn't, maybe they didn't like it. I don't know the reason why they didn't put it on you know, the What's your history of Brian and, and how did it come to, to be the past that he, he joined Saxon? Uh, how did he come to join Saxon? Yeah, what's yes. your history, your past history with him as well? Well, we, we don't have a massive history with him. I mean, he was around in the in 1980 when all the bands started uh, getting signed and things, you know. But I think Dominic got signed a bit late, like 1982. So I think they probably missed the boat a little bit. I mean, uh, fortunately, uh, Metallica picked up on four of their songs. Um, so that gave them uh, some sort of, uh, you know, kudos in the business to carry on, really, I suppose. But, um, yeah, Brian learned some songs. Paul was ill with COVID, and uh, we had a very um, special festival coming up. We couldn't really cancel. And um, so Brian sort of learnt the Saxon songs. This was a couple of years ago. And Brian learnt the Saxon songs for that set. So he already had, he already had a foot in the door, really. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Brian's been to Paul's a few times and, and Zoomed with Paul. So Paul's showed him all his licks and things and, uh, you know, how to play the songs. And, you know, so he's been he's been um, quite, quite close with Paul, learning the Saxon stuff. How's Paul's health? Is it okay? Is it uh, easy stable? Yeah, I think or... he's okay. It, it just, it just got a little bit of, I think he's got a bit of rheumatism in his fingers when he plays a lot. And um, he just wanted a rest, I think, wanted a quiet life. You know, okay. being in being in a in a sort of touring touring rock band is not really a quiet life. So how, you know, you're the last man standing. How do you able to do it all these years, Biff? How's what? Sorry, you're you're the last man standing. How have you been able to do it all these years and continue to do it? I, I don't know, really. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, health takes its toll as you get older. So I suppose you have to just. Um, you know, try and try and stay, stay as as um, you know as motivated as you can, really, and keep getting, you know, keep writing albums and touring and getting the juice flowing. Really, that's what it's all about. You know. You know, it's amazing your voice. You know, you just <laughs> I don't know if you keep getting better. I think he's getting better, like over the years. And I mean, um, and then I see the younger bands, and, and they're just kind of you know they're using voice, uh, you know. Uh, in the studio there something tells me you guys are authentic when you hit the stage you know i can't prove it but i it just feels authentic like that is the core value of saxon being authentic yeah it's very authentic you know i don't do anything with my voice it's just i've learned how to sing over the years and uh you know i just um keep it keep it straight and uh just just uh, go for it really that's the secret i think um you know Studio-wise, we don't use really any any sort of, uh, you know, we don't use any um, computer, you know, generator to back up anything. When we play live, we 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 very we, we don't use click tracks or anything. Everything you get is live. Uh, we might have a few noises on on Nibs's bass pedals, you know, like um, uh, sirens and jet planes and things, but just little effects and things. But most of what you get and what you hear is live. So, say so what do you say to the new bands who are starting off that are already lip syncing, you know, to, you know, using laptops? I mean, is that the wrong way to start a new band? Uh, well, lip syncing, lip syncing is miming, really. But I think, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of software you can use now to enhance, you enhance the sounds and enhance yourself. Uh, we don't really bother with that, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's a bit, um, you know, we're a live band, always have been known as a live band, and our albums are an extension of that, really. That's how we work, you know. Yeah, and seeing you guys live, you're you're an impossible act to follow. Just the power, and, and you've been doing it so long, the professionalism. I mean, I, I'd hate to follow you guys at any kind of festival, so. Uh, it, it, well, you know, we're known to be good live. I mean, obviously... You know, a lot of it depends on the audience being good live. You know, you need a good audience to be able to, uh, you know, capture the energy and uh, and turn it into something special. But, um, yeah, we're a pretty good live band. And, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as far as the band's following us, that's, you know, that's, that's up to them.
<laughs> <laughs> Salem Witch Trials, getting back to the album. Do you find that topic is kind of similar to today's culture, you know, of sort of shutting people down and canceling people? Because the Salem Witch Trials was basically shutting down a group of people and just sort of trying them for some ridiculous reason. Is there any well, connection? Uh, a lot of it's based on revenge and paranoia. You know, I mean, uh, you know, to, to back back in those days, I think, you know, if something went wrong, it was always considered to be the devil's work. Um, you know, I mean, some people still think that. But, um, you know, some revenge, you know, some some woman, you know, spurned some guy's advances. So he said, she, said he would, she said she was a witch and, you know, strange looking people that lived on their own you know just general paranoia and i think it's um i think basically it it got to be a form of entertainment at, so, at one point you know uh, uh killing witches or what they thought were witches but a lot of it's based on uh, you know religious belief really and you know people were playing on that and uh, just the paranoia comes along you know yeah pirates of the airways i mean you know, a lot of your generation in Britain were influenced by the pirate radio station, like uh, Radio Caroline. Can you tell us a little bit about the impact of having those pirate radios uh, for yourself? Well, I was about 12 years old in the in the 60s, uh, very early 60s, uh, 12, 13 years old. And uh, there was no uh, there was no uh, there was no pop or rock music played on radio. Uh, you know, you might have got like maybe the Beatles now and again, but you didn't have things like Rolling Stones and Kinks and some of the more American bands, you know, they weren't on, uh, they weren't on daytime radio in, in England. And at night it was more, cause most, mostly orchestras and comedy things. And it, it used to stop at, um, you know, 10 o'clock at night, the radio used to stop like the television did. So, you know, we all had to go to bed at 10 o'clock. And, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, you know, we used to listen to these uh, stations that came in at night on these uh, pirate stations, and they played all all the big songs of the day. You know, the, all the early Rolling Stones and all those bands from the from the sixties. They, they were all on there, and it caused a revolution in the UK. Um, the BBC and the government had to uh, open a station for teenagers, and that's how it all started. The swinging, as they called it. <laughs> Kubla Khan and the Merchants of Venice. All right. This this is Marco Polo, I'm assuming, right? The Merchant it of is, Venice. Yeah, it is Marco okay. Polo. And when he met Kubla Khan in the East, in uh, Mongolia, I guess? Yeah, well, China, actually. He was the Emperor of China then. Okay. Uh, his grandfather, Genghis Khan, was the was a Mongolian chief. Mm, but um, okay. no, he went there and wrote about China. You know, nobody had ever heard of gunpowder before. Nobody had ever, nobody had ever known of silk. And the ceramics that they used to make. So, um, yeah, he wrote about it, and um, he was the first guy to to write about it. Uh, it's, it's an interesting story, and the word Kublai Khan is a great word to sing. You know, <laughs> good <laughs> I think story. That's first. I mean, that's the first we've ever heard Kublai Khan in a song. Maybe I heard Zana do in there too. You know, a little a nod to Rush and Olivia Newton John. <laughs> well. Uh, Xanadu was one of the cities that he built, actually. So that was, you know, yeah. uh, I think in the poem, you know, uh, Rush used it in the poem, but he mentions it as a hidden hidden city of you know, utopia. But uh, Xanadu was one of his cities. Okay. I mean, you listen to the intro of a prophecy. I hear Brian Blessed's voice. It takes you right back to that first Blackadder series. How did you get him on board? Well, he's a friend of ours. We've known him for some time. Um, he's introduced us on stage a couple of times. Uh, yeah, he's a big fan. He's from uh, he's from Yorkshire, you know, our part of the world, and he loves the band. And uh, yeah, I just asked him if he if he do the talking for me, and he said, oh. yeah. I mean, he's um, you know his big uh, his big break was in Flash Gordon, you know, Gordon is alive, all that sort of things. What a it's, voice! What a voice! Oh, he's <laughs> very gotta... is you know. So I wanted to bring a bit of it just to the album. So I thought it might be cool to, uh, you know, to have him uh, tell people what the song's about, you know, Hellfire and Damnation, the prophecy in the Bible. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I got to tell you, this is my personal like 10 second review of the album. It's It's got that Saxon stamp, but you guys are going out of the box a little bit. And I love that. And the sound, like you mentioned, the sound is excellent. The production is really good on this one. And the energy. Yeah, it's is- done, it done a great job, Andy Sneap. Is uh, you know, he he uh, he worked he worked really hard and fast on this. He did. I think he did it in just over a week, which is oh. quite uh, which is quite um, fast these days. You know, I mean, people are really a lot of bands are really fastidious about the attention to detail. You know, going back in and listening, changing and fiddling. Well, we just basically um, you know did this, like I say. Uh, very quick, a lot of passion involved with it. You know, we had a deadline to keep. So yeah. So any any tours planned? What's what's next for Saxon? Well, we're going out with Judas Priest and Uriah Heap in March in Europe, and then we come to America in April. I think the first show in America is the twenty third of April in Fort Lauderdale. You know, don't don't um, hold me on that, but I think that's what I've seen. Twenty third of April, Fort Lauderdale. Then it goes up the East Coast and then across, across into the Midwest. So yeah, we are coming to America. Then we'll go back do some festivals in Europe, and um, you know, and all year. I think all year we'll be touring on this album. Did you so see no ca- no okay, Canadian? That's what I was going to say. So this. <laughs> Pardon? No Canadian date so far. Not so far, no, no. But that doesn't mean to say we won't do any. We're going to do uh, part one and part two. You okay. know what I mean? So um, I don't know. I haven't seen any Canadian dates on this tour, but that doesn't mean to say there aren't any. Okay. Well, what are your fa- favorite songs on this album? We'll just kind of go around the room here. Favorite tracks off the new album? You mean favorite... me first? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You were first. I think uh, uh, at the moment, Madame Guillotine. Yeah. Please don't lose your head. <laughs> I have I have to say, Biff, that is the one where that's the song that kind of goes off into outside of the box of typical Saxon. And you're right. That is very melodic and it's very different. Still metal, but it's different. Yeah, definitely. Alan? No, great. I mean, uh, you know, Hellfire and Damnation is such a majestic song. It's, it's It goes with the Saxon tradition for those... Uh, Eponymous titled songs, uh, just a great album, Battle of Hastings. So, hey, I learned something new. That's always fun when you hear music, you learn about history. So, <laughs> yeah. you do. You do. Yeah, for me, my takeaway is not only you have uh, Nigel's great drumming as usual, but the guitar solos are so tasteful and and just you know just so um, well placed and and not complicated. You can really feel the emotion in the guitar solos. That's what I took away from this album. So. Yeah, definitely. The, the Brian and Doug have done a great job on the guitars, definitely. And I love 1066, which we didn't talk about. I think that's one <laughs> of my favorite songs. I don't know, 20,000 feet, 747, 1066. I just love <laughs> the way you put it together. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good song. You know, it's, it's like poetry. You know, I wrote the, I wrote the lyrics as poetry uh, without the music first. So it's always good when it fits together with a great guitar riff, you know. Yeah. All right. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, you know what, everybody go, go, you know what? I'm really excited. That cover is the perfect tone for the music on the album. So the, everybody out there who's going to be watching this, pick up the album, pre-order it. It's a great Christmas gift. And the tour is going to be announced. I think the complete tour in January. Uh, 8 it is. Yeah. 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 Which is good, but it's nice to know that maybe there's a possibility or come to Canada. So that's cool. Maybe there's a possibility. We like coming to Canada. You know, we've been many times before. So, uh, you know, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. I've told the manager, you know, I want to go everywhere, Canada, you know. We've done South America just, so there's no reason why we shouldn't do Canada. Well, right. Merry Christmas to you and uh, yeah, your Merry family and, you, and all and we'll the best for 2024. You, uh, yeah, we'll see you in uh, maybe the new year. That would be great, okay? That would be great. All right, Biff, thank you Brilliant. for your time. Thank see you. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.